Hey everyone, it's Melissa. Well, I filmed this whole darn thing and I hadn't turned my, uh, my record button on. So here we go again. <laughs> so, uh, I, first of all, I'm gonna talk about the products that really get me ready for the spring and summer. Uh, I live here in the South. It gets really hot in the spring, starting in the spring and in the summer, it's just really hot. So out of necessity, we have to wear less clothes. So our arms have, usually are uncovered and my legs are uncovered and I have on sandals, so my feet are exposed. So I like to start about right now, kind of going over my products, seeing which ones I need to get back out, which ones I need to refresh and buy again, and just kind of analyzing things because it comes, comes up on us quickly here, and so I like to be ready. So before I do that, I wanted to apologize for not uh, getting my comments answered this week. I'm very, very sorry. I always want to try to do that before I do a new video. And I wasn't able to this week, and I will explain why at the end. Uh, but I'm putting it at the end because it's kind of chatty, and uh, some people just don't like to see uh, chatty videos, so they like to get to the products and get it done, and you know, then they can click out. So I am going to save that to it to the end. But I did want to apologize. I, I always like to try to do that, and I I like to try to you know upload every four or five days, but I wasn't able to do that either. So, uh, before I start talking about uh, my products that I'm going to use for the spring and summer, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Mary Glitzy Fritzy, uh, one of our own that we all love so much. Uh, she had, uh, a while back, had, uh, she has a jewelry store, and she had named some earrings after me because I love threaders, and I, I just fell in love with the threaders that she had. So she had named one the Melissa, and, and I was just so thrilled uh, and just, you know, over, overwhelmed. But now she has honored Kristen and me both, Kristen321, and come up with this earring that she has sent to Kristen and me called the Melissa. It's her BFF earrings. And I just, I was so tickled. I think they're beautiful. They've got uh, a drop right here, a, a jewel drop, and just gorgeous gorgeous and you can get them in silver or gold so i'm going to put her link it's it's glitzyfritzy.com you go to earrings and then go to threaders and they will be on there but uh i hope everyone will go support her and and buy them they're they're just a real reasonably priced and they last and last and they're so lightweight and comfortable. You absolutely do not know you're wearing earrings with these threaders. I wanted to thank Mary so much. It was such a kind thing to do and uh, you know, please go over and give her lots of support and lots of love um, because she's just a wonderful person. So thank you so much, Mary. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to the products that uh, I, I think are spring worthy. And I came up with that a little bit because, do you remember the Seinfeld episode where Elaine was, would, would go through the guys uh, to see if they were sponge worthy or not? Well, these, I kind of go through my products to see if they're spring worthy or not. So, yeah, because I'm a, I'm a Seinfeld fan. So, uh, these are the products here. So, I have a bit of a problem with um, so much of my skin being exposed because I do wear a lot of like sundresses and I wear skirts in the summertime and I wear sandals because you have to here. But I have a lot of problem with so much skin being exposed uh, because I have, I'll call them freckles all over me. They're, they're spots, freckles, you know, I just have that kind of skin. I didn't get them on my face, but I think I inherited that from my mother. She's, she was covered and covered, covered in freckles. She was a natural redhead, just covered in freckles. And so I think I've inherited that from her. But uh, I got them really early and I had like age spots on my hands in my 30s. And um, so what I did was I went several times and had them lasered. And I mean, she lasered them in deep and went back, you know, several sessions and, you know, it kind of gets expensive. And so, uh, you know, she would go so deep that I have to put ice on myself. And she tried it on my arms and she tried it on my legs. And so they would peel off, and, but the spot would still be underneath. So we finally decided it probably just, it just didn't work for me. But you know, it's a real good tool to have. 
So I, I tried different products. I didn't want to use uh, Retin-A on my body or any kind of faders because for one thing, it's just too expensive to put Retin-A all over your body and I just probably wouldn't think it would be good for me to absorb that much vitamin A all over. It's bad enough that I do it all over my face. So I found out that my skin responds really well to glycolic acid and uh, the spots on my skin, freckles on my skin, respond very well to it. So um, I found Glytone. It's a glycolic exfoliating body lotion. It's got a free acid value of 17.5. Now 17.5 is pretty strong uh, for glycolic acid. So you have to be, uh, it's not a disclaimer, it's a little bit of a warning that you have to go ease into this a little bit slowly. Uh, when you first get it, I use it after my shower. And one thing you never want to do is use it after you shave your legs. If you just, just don't, it just stings so bad no matter how much you get used to it. You just, it's just too much to do. If you, if you use this um, on skin that's too exfoliated or in the beginning use it too often, night after night after night, it could start burning and you could get like a little contact dermatitis. I have had that before and I've had to back off when that happens. So you want to ease into it and just take your time. And it will take time. It doesn't fade like overnight or anything like that. I guess this is about my third or fourth bottle. But I have really been impressed with how it has made my skin more even and made the freckles fade more where they just aren't really as noticeable. Even Doug would pick up my arm and say, gosh, your arm just looks so even and smooth now. And you know, uh, he, he just, he noticed it and noticed my hands and everything. So, uh, it just, it got, it just got rid of my, my hands completely. Um, and so I'll tell you what I did with that. When you start out, start out with just gently cleaning your skin with a mild body wash and using a puff. Just gently do it and then put your lotion on it and let your skin get used to it maybe every two nights or every other night and see how you do. And this is what I do now. Go up to you, you can go up to using the gloves. So I give my arms and I give my legs and I give my feet a good scrub. And when I get out, I put on the glyton, glyton, uh, glycolic acid and you know put it on all over and all over my chest and my shoulders and I'm done I've been satisfied with it 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 still is continuing the process of fading but it's faded so well that I can definitely live with it this summer uh, so been very pleased with that now on my hands which I think on your hands the spots are a little more stubborn especially if they're the liver spots the age spots whatever you want to call them so, um, I go even stronger with that. I still use the, glyco the glytone, but when I'm washing, I use one of the Japanese washcloths that are really, really rough. I use that to me. They're rougher than the gloves. So, I use those and I scrub, scrub my hands and I scrub them with this lemon sage soap. It's one with nature lemon sage soap. I got mine on Amazon, I believe. And uh, I guess the lemon in it is also helps to fade, but I will put I will put that inside the sponge like this. And I, and I cut mine in half, so that's why it's raggedy, because they're great big sponges. And I'll take it and just scrub my hands, and then scrub my other hand, and then put my gloves on and scrub the rest of my body with my gloves. I don't, I tried with this, but it was too much on, on the rest of my body, because this soap is, um, it's a little bit harsh. So I don't use it on my body at all, but it works really well on my hands. And so I do that, rinse off, and then when I get out, you know, I put the, the glycolic acid on. So that's what I do to take care of the skin on my, hand, on my body. And then, um, you know, of course I like to use my sunscreen. And I have found this sunscreen uh, that I really enjoyed. I started using it last year, and I used it some in the winter time, but I really enjoy using it in the summer. It's from Obagi, 
and I just use it on my chest and on my arms and like on the rest of my body I will use like a, a drugstore one like Neutrogena or something like that because this is a little more expensive but what I do is I put it on my hands and on my arms and on my chest and shoulders and stuff. It's a, it's an SPF of 50. It's tinted. And so I got, you get a choice of the cool tint or the warm tint. So I got the warm tint and it just really uh, warms up your skin and just kind of gives it a nice glow and just sort of a bronzy color. And I really like it a whole lot. I think it just looks like you, maybe you've had a little sun when you actually have it but it protects at the same time. And uh, so I really like that a whole lot. Okay, and so how I take care of my feet, and I have used this, and this is the same one I have used, I guess about 10 years. It's the Diamond Cell, it's the Diamond Cell Foot Buffer Number 11 Medium. Um, so I use this every single night, and it is the it is not the coarsest one they have. I think they have like a heavy one or something. I like the medium because I like to uh, just buff the bottom of my feet, my heels, and my toes, you know, on each side, on the outside and the inside of my foot. I like to do that every single day. And so it doesn't, it's, it's so, it's rough, but it's not so rough that it, you know, peels off calluses and stuff like that. It just keeps them all kind of smooth and kind of keeps the skin nicely peeled off. And then after I get in the shower, I put on, while my feet are just slightly damp, I put on the extra Mary Kay Extra Emollient Night Cream. It's like Vaseline, except it's just better. I love it. I love the smell. It's got that old lady smell. I used to use Mary Kay back a long, long, long time ago, and it just reminds me of that time. I used it when I was pregnant on my stomach. It reminds me of that time, so I love it. But I use this uh, after my shower, and before I get in my shower, I just buff my feet off um, every single day, and my feet are in good shape. Uh, they're ready for sandal weather, and I'm not ashamed of them. I mean, yeah, feet are the most beautiful things in the world, but uh, I think they're going to be ready to wear sandals, and, and I do this every year, and this one will last and last and last. You just clean it off gently with soap and water, you know, mild soap and water, and put it down to dry, and it's ready for the next day. So that's how to take care of my feet. Okay, my next one is how I sort of self-tan my legs. And I don't have the product, I have not bought it yet this year, so I will insert a picture of it. It is the uh, Nivea, it's the Nivea Sunkissed Radiance Gradual Self Tanner. Uh, I tried, tried a bunch of different self tanners to self tan my legs. I don't self tan my arms or my face or my chest or anything like that. It doesn't bother me that it's pale. But my legs, uh, I wear so many uh, sundresses and skirts in the summertime that I like a little color on my legs. Uh, so what I do is I use a gradual tanner and that seems to work so much better than just a dedicated self tanner because the self tanner just brings out the spots and I mean just really makes them so much darker. So if I use a gradual tanner, it just sort of the spots just kind of, the freckles just kind of blend in a little bit better and it just gives an overall smoother, more even appearance rather than the self tanner. So uh, I just have better luck with that one. I like the, the Nivea one. I've tried others. I've tried the, um, the Jergens one and I didn't care for it as much. It just didn't give me the look I was, I was wanting, but the Nivea, I really, I really like it. This will be about the third or fourth summer that I'll be using it. So um, I, I really like it a whole lot. So that's all of my products. If you're clicking out, I appreciate you watching and I'll talk to everyone soon. But if you're staying, then um, I'm gonna tell you why. It's, a, it's sort of chatty and I'll try not to make it too long. I will tell you why. Uh, what was going on with me this week and why I was not able to make a video or answer my comments. <coughs> And I'll start off by saying that I think, you know, life sort of ebbs and flows. And sometimes, you know, we go through periods where things just kind of happen to us. And it's unfortunate, but, you know, it happens, to, things happen to everybody. And uh, so, you know, you just kind of go along with it. And it just seems like I'm in one of those phases right now. Week before last, I had the flu. Uh, 
last week, you know, I had that spot on me that I was worried about, and so, and it was fine. She just froze it, and, and they're going to check back when I go back in May, so it's fine. Thank you so much for all your comments about it, and uh, questions and worries, but this week, I, I got hurt, and uh, so I was going to tell you why. I'm, I'm very clumsy. Um, I've always been clumsy. I don't know why. I was always athletic, but, but real clumsy. And I always ended up running into things or getting hurt or bruised or, or something like that. I, um, you know, like, it was right before I started doing YouTube, I was doing, I had one of those exercise balls. So I did a back bend on it. And of course, you know, when I did the back bend, the ball kind of started moving. So I kind of did a backwards crab trying to keep, keep up with the ball moving. And so I ran into a table and hit my head so hard it knocked me out and I had to go to the emergency room. And ended up, I also had broken my finger. So just things like that, that, you know, accidents, bizarre accidents seem to happen to me. So I had one of those this week. Um, last week, a week ago, uh, I shared this on Snapchat. And I, th I think no, I shared it on Instagram. And by the way, uh, I've just decided I'm gonna stick with Snapchat. I just don't like the Instagram stories. Uh, I feel too exposed or something. With Snapchat, it's just my subscribers and I just feel, I don't know, I just feel more comfortable there or something. I feel like I can be more myself. I, I, I'm just not comfortable with the Instagram stories. So I'm just gonna stick with Snapchat and it's always listed under, underneath what my Snapchat name is. That is hard to say. But anyway, I shared it on that. We went to one of those escape rooms. Uh, it was some of my family, my son, my daughter-in-law, and my daughter-in-law's father, and we did an escape room in Chattanooga. And that is where they lock you in a room, and you have all these clues that you have to solve. Some of it's math, some of it's reasoning, some of it's uh, you know put, putting puzzles together physically and seeing what it you know how one thing will lead to another will lead to another, uh, and so. You try to escape from the room. You have one hour to get out. And they're just lots of fun. We're kind of addicted to them and we just love it. Okay, so we were in this one room and it was dark. Uh, and so one part, you know, we, we, we solved, solved it one part and it made it flash up around the corner of the room. It made it flash up what, you know, the formula was, the mathematic formula. So I, I ran around the corner to, to look up at it, you know, and, and make my notes and stuff so we could start figuring it out. Well, for some reason, there was a ramp. As you went around the corner, there was a ramp that came out of something else, out of the wall. So I tripped over the ramp, and as I tripped, I reached my back. I was trying to keep myself from falling because I tripped real bad. And so I reached my, I reached my back really hard, and... And as I was falling, I turned and I ended up running a rod into my back, you know, hitting my, hitting my back on a rod really hard. And so, you know, everybody stopped, you know, are you okay, you okay? And I was like, yeah, I think so, you know, let's finish the game. So we finished the game and I went home and I thought, you know, this was Saturday. I thought, yeah, I'm okay. And the next day I cooked our meal, our, our Sunday dinner where everybody came over. And then Sunday night I did my exercises and then by Monday I thought, you know, it's not feeling very good. And But I, I went to work and did everything I needed to do and Tuesday it was a little bit worse. And and then by, by Wednesday night, Thursday, it had gotten so bad that I could not even get up. I couldn't even get up without off the bed without Doug helping me. Uh, it was just, I guess it was Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday because I, I went and got it seen about Thursday. <clears throat> but it was so bad that, it was so bad <laughs> that I had to, when I walked, I had to, you know, drag my little leg behind me like Tiny Tim on, on a Christmas carol. And, you know, it was like I was in a Dickens novel, like, you know, please, sir, can I have some more? And so I was, you know, dragging my leg along and I was just so painful looking. And I just couldn't believe that this bizarre accident had happened to me. So I thought, well, I wonder if that rod hit my kidney. 
you know, do I have a herniated disc or a slip disc or, you know, what is going on? Because the pain, I was flat on my back. The pain was terrible. So I went to, uh, I went to get it seen about Thursday and what it, what had happened was it had just gotten really, you know, I, I'd reached my back uh, and my muscle there on my lower right side had gotten wrenched and when I hit the rod it had gotten bruised too because you know a big bruise came up so it had bruised the muscle too but my spine was fine and my discs were fine you know no herniated disc I did not have pain radiating down to down my legs or anything so no no nerve damage but uh I was so flat on my back and just so helpless that I had to lay on the bed so since Thursday, since Wednesday really, I have been on the bed just getting up to go to the bathroom and dragging my poor leg going to the bathroom, laying back down with icing and then heat, you know, and then Advil just every four hours to help with inflammation. And that has really, really made a difference. I am so much better today. I, I walk now like I'm pregnant instead of, you know, having to pull my, pull my leg along. But that is why I couldn't even, I was so in so much pain, I couldn't even, you know, sit there and answer too many comments. I, I would watch videos and then comment on the pe people's videos. Really, really short, but uh, I just, uh, you know, I just couldn't do much of anything. I would kind of raise my arm to click the channel on the TV. But I, I've been in bed this whole time and this is the first day I've gotten dressed. So I did take hot baths at night, so I was clean. So that is uh, my bizarre accident that happened to me this week. Hopefully now, you know, maybe things come in threes and you know, maybe uh, I, I'm over my, my clumsiness where I can not be hurt anymore, but... Uh, but anyway, so thank you so much for sticking this out and for watching and just being uh, such good friends. I really appreciate it so much. Hope everyone has a wonderful weekend and I'll see you hopefully in a few days. Bye-bye.